Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Now I am going to start the problems on ratio analysis. Last four videos I have completely explained regarding the theory of ratios and formulae of ratio analysis. So without understanding, without remembering the formulae, you cannot proceed to watch the problems. So my suggestion, be thorough, be perfect on all the four category of ratios. Liquidity ratio, capital structure ratio, activity or turnover ratio and profitability ratios. Be perfect on all the ratios, then you come to this video. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject financial decision making. Select the videos of ratio analysis. Be perfect on all the formulas, then we'll start. So before starting the problems, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems, which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep ready the problem while watching, before watching this video. Take the screenshot of the first six short problems on ratio analysis. Now, I'm starting with the short problems. See the first short problem. From the following particulars, calculate current ratio and acid test ratio. So this is the first short problem. Two liquidity ratios it is asking, current ratio and acid test ratio. Acid test ratio is also called quick ratio. Now, cash in hand, cash at bank, bills receivable, stock, debtors, prepaid expenses, sundry creditors and bills payable. Out of these items, you can see only two items are current liabilities. Those two items are creditors and bills payable. Remaining all items are current assets. So you have to remember which are the current assets and which are the current liability. Cash in hand, cash at bank, bills receivable, stock, <clears throat> debtors, prepaid expenses. These are the current assets. Now see the solution here. CA stands for current assets. So cash in hand, cash at bank, bills receivable, stock, debtors, prepaid expenses. The same thing, whatever is given in the problem, same amounts are taken, the total of current assets, 2 lakh 80,000. Current liabilities are only two, sundry creditors and bills payable. These two are current liabilities. So current assets, 2 lakh 80,000, current liability, 1 lakh 40,000. Now remember the formula for current ratio. Current assets by current liabilities. So 2 lakh 80,000 divided by 1 lakh 40,000, you'll get 2. 2 is to 1. So it is customary to write down 2 is to 1. Actually, when you divide 2 lakh 80,000 by 1 lakh 40,000, you'll get 2. But we write it down as 2 is to 1. It, uh, indicating that for every 1 rupee of current liability, we have 2 rupee of current assets. That means the current assets are double the current liabilities. That is the meaning of 2 is to 1. Now, acid test ratio. The formula for acid test ratio is quick asset by current liability. Now, what are quick assets? Current assets minus inventory, that is stock, minus prepaid expenses. Two items you deduct from current assets. The remaining is called quick asset. So, what is the total of current asset? 2 lakh 80,000. From this 2 lakh 80,000, subtract stock. How much is the stock? 1 lakh 20,000. How much is prepaid expenses? 2,000. So from 2 lakh 80,000 minus 1 lakh 20,000 minus 2,000, you will get 1 lakh 58,000. So 1 lakh 58,000 is the quick asset. And current liability are 1 lakh 40,000. So 1 lakh 58,000 divided by 1 lakh 40,000, you will get 1.13. So better we write on 1.13 is to 1. That's it. So it is asking you to calculate current ratio and acid test ratio. Both the ratios we have, uh, we have calculated. So we have completed the first short problem. Now come to the second short problem. From the following particulars, calculate debt equity ratio and proprietary ratio. The two ratios it is asking you, debt equity ratio. So first of all, the formula for debt equity ratio is long term debt divided by shareholders fund. Everything depends on the formula. So blindly, without a blink of eye, 
you should say debt to equity ratio means long term debt divided by shareholders fund and what do you mean by long term uh, long term debts the long term loans or debentures in our problem we are not given loans but we are given debentures so what is the information uh, equity share capital 5 lakh preference share capital 3 lakh reserves 2 lakh current liability 1 lakh 8% debentures 3 lakh fixed assets 10 lakh and current assets 4 lakh so only debentures are given the debenture is a long term debt so long term debt debentures 3 lakh this we got it long term debt 3 lakh shareholders fund we require so remember the formula for shareholders fund equity share capital plus preference share capital plus reserves minus fictitious asset we don't have fictitious assets so only three items we have to add up equity share capital plus preference share capital plus reserves and surplus that is called shareholders fund <coughs> so here equity share capital plus preference share capital plus reserves 5 lakh plus 3 lakh plus 2 lakh 10 lakh <coughs> So we got long term debt, we got shareholders fund. Long term debt 3 lakh, shareholders fund 10 lakh. So 3 lakh by 10 lakh, 0 0.3. What is this 0 0.3? Debt equity ratio. <coughs> that means the debt is 30% of shareholders fund. The debt is 30% of shareholders fund. That is the significance. Now, proprietary ratio. The proprietary ratio formula is net to worth by total assets. Net worth by total assets that is the formula so net worth the meaning of net worth is shareholders fund and already we know shareholders fund equity share capital plus preferential capital plus reserves already we have calculated here shareholders fund equity share capital preferential capital plus reserve 10 lakh so already we are having the net worth 10 lakh total assets means fixed assets plus current assets so it is given fixed asset 10 lakh current assets 4 lakh so 10 lakh plus 4 lakh 14 lakh total assets 14 lakh now simply substitute in the formula proprietary ratio is equal to net worth by total assets so 10 lakh by 14 lakh it is 0 0.71 that's it so second problem it is asking you two ratios that is debt equity ratio and proprietary ratio we have completed now come to the third problem if the net income of Simco Limited is 1,22,600 after tax 50%. That means whatever profit they got, out of that profit 50% tax is paid. And after tax the 50% is 1,22,600. That means how much is the profit before tax? This 1,22,600 is the net income. Net income means after paying the tax. So how much tax we have paid? 50% we are paid. So simple example, if we have earned 100 rupees, so out of 100 rupees, 50% we have to pay the tax. So 50 rupees will be in the form of tax. So remaining how much? 50 rupees. Because out of 100 rupees, 50 rupees we have paid the tax and 50 rupees is remaining. Similarly, here profit is 1,22,000 net income after paying the tax. How much tax? 50% we have paid the tax. That means we have paid 1,22,600 as tax. 1,22,600 is the tax we have already paid. After paying 1,22,600 tax, the remaining amount is 1,22,600. And its fixed interest charges on debentures amounted to 4,800. The interest paid on debt is 4,800. Calculate interest coverage ratio. Again, remember the formula interest coverage ratio interest coverage ratio is equal to pbit profit before interest and tax divided by fixed interest charges fixed interest charges are given 4800 but pbit profit before interest and tax is not given that we have to find out so already all these formulas i have already explained in the theory videos so if you have watched those videos you are in a position to remember pbit is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. So, interest coverage ratio. PBIT divided by fixed interest charges. PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. Since PAT profit after tax is 122,600 and tax rate is 
So tax paid is also 120 to 600. 50% we have paid the tax, remaining 50% is PAT. Remaining 50% is PAT. So tax paid is 120 to 600. So PBIT is equal to 122. PAT is given in the problem. Net income is PAT. So PAT is 1 lakh 20 to 600. Tax paid is 120 to 600. And interest charges 4,800. So finally PBIT profit before interest and taxes 2 lakh 50,000. Finally we have to calculate interest coverage ratio. So interest coverage ratio is equal to PBIT 2 lakh 50,000 divided by fixed interest charges 4,800. So interest coverage ratio comes to 52.08 times. Whenever we calculate turnover ratios, we write down in times. In times, that's it. Now, fourth problem. See the fourth one. From the following particulars, calculate the coverage ratios. Now see here. Net profit after interest and taxes. That means after paying the interest and taxes, PAT is 3 lakh. Income tax paid is 2 lakh 52,000, interest 46,000 and preference dividend is 32,000. From this interest it is asking you to calculate coverage ratio. So two coverage ratios are there, interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio. Already these things I have explained in the theory video. So what is the formula for interest coverage ratio? PBIT divided by fixed interest charges just now we have applied. PBIT, not given in the problem. We have to find out. PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. PAT is given in the problem 3 lakh. Income tax is given 2 lakh 52,000. And interest is given 46,000. Substitute 3 lakh plus 252 plus 46. 5 lakh 98,000 is the PBIT. And fixed interest charges are 46,000. So denominator will take 46. 598 divided by 46 will get 13 times. Interest coverage ratio 13 times. Finished. Now dividend coverage ratio. The formula for dividend coverage ratio is PAT divided by fixed preference dividend. PAT is already given in the problem is 3 lakh. And fixed preference dividend is 32,000. So 3 lakh by 32,000. You will get 9.375 times. This is called dividend coverage ratio. So two coverage ratio we have calculated. Interest coverage and dividend coverage. Next comes fifth problem. Messrs. Rakesh and company supplies you the following information for the year ending 31st December 1989. Credit sales 1,50,000. Cash sales 2,50,000. Then return inward means sales return. Return inward means sales return 25,000. Opening stock 25,000. Closing stock 30, 35,000. Find the inventory turnover ratio when gross profit is 20%. Now a little bit twisting problem. Now see carefully what it is asking you inventory turnover ratio. The formula for inventory turnover ratio is cost of revenue from operations divided by average stock. All these formulas I will explain in the theory video. Again I repeat inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of revenue from operations divided by average stock. So cost of revenue from operation not given in the problem. Gross profit ratio is given. So by using the gross profit ratio, we can find out cost of revenue from operation. See carefully. In inventory turnover ratio, cost of revenue from operation divided by average stock. Revenue from operations. First of all, we calculate revenue from operation. That is net sales. Revenue from operation means net sales. How to find out net sales? Credit sales plus cash sales minus return inward. Credit sales plus cash sales minus return inward. You will get the revenue from operation. So credit sales are given 1,50,000. Cash sales are given 2,50,000. Return inward is given 25,000. So 150 plus 250 minus 25, 375,000 is the revenue from operations or net sales. Now gross profit is 20% of revenue from operation. 
the gross profit 20% of 3,75,000. It comes to 75,000. So we got the gross profit. Now remember the formula. Cost of revenue from operation is equal to revenue from operation minus GP. Minus gross profit. Always while watching this video, keep a notebook beside you, calculator and pen. Whenever I say something important, which uh, first time you are listening, watching, immediately write it down. Then only you can be able to remember for a long period of time. So uh, cost of revenue from operation is equal to revenue from operation minus gross profit. So revenue from operation is 3,75,000. Gross profit is 75,000. So 3,75,000 minus 75,000, 3 lakh. That is called cost of revenue from operation. Earlier it was called cost of goods sold, COGS. According to old terminology, it was COGS. According to new concept, it is called cost of revenue from operations. Only name change, nothing else. Earlier we used to say COGS is equal to sales minus GP. Sales minus GP. But now we said cost of revenue from operation is equal to revenue from operation minus GP. That's it. So we got cost of revenue from operation 3 lakh. Now average stock. Opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. So opening stock 25,000, closing stock 35,000 divided by 2. 30,000 average stock. So both we got we got cost of revenue from operations and also we got average stock simply substitute in this formula inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of revenue from operation divided by average stock so 3 lakh divided by 30,000 you will get 10 times this is the inventory turnover ratio fifth problem completed now sixth problem <clears throat> The cost of goods sold by a firm in a year was 20 lakh. Cost of goods sold again means cost of revenue from operation. Cost of goods sold or cost of revenue from operation means same. 20 lakh. It makes a profit of 20% on sales. Gross profit is 20% on sales. If the stock at the beginning of the year is 4 lakh 50,000 and closing stock is 5 lakh 50,000. Opening stock and closing stock is given. Now, what is the stock turnover ratio? Again, exactly similar to the previous problem. Stock turnover ratio is equal to opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. So, opening stock is given 4,50,000. Closing stock is given 5,50,000 divided by 2. So, 5 lakh rupees is the average stock. 5 lakh rupees is the average stock. And cost of goods sold is given in the problem. That is nothing but cost of revenue from operations the so cost of goods sold is equal to cost of revenue from operation that is given in the problem no need to calculate 20 lakh rupees given so simply you substitute inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of revenue from operation divided by uh, average stock the so cost of revenue from operations is 20 lakh average stock 5 lakh so 20 lakh by 5 lakh 4 times this is the inventory turnover ratio that's all. So in this video, totally six short problems I have explained. Inshallah, we will continue these problems on ratio analysis in the next video.